Okay. Uh, thanks for the introduction. Thanks for everyone here to come in this session. My name is Yan Boliang, and uh, I'm an AppSpark committer and, and software engineer from Hortonworks. In this talk, I will share some experience about uh, uh, our work to scalable uh, AppSpark ML Lab to billions of parameters. This is joint work with Wei Chen Xu. Okay, we will first uh, start with the background of this work. Why we need to scale um, ML Lab to billions of parameters? Then we discuss the major contribution of the work, a scalable LBFDS implementation on Spark. We call it uh, vector-free LBFDS or VLBFDS. Then a scalable logistic regression implementation on the VLBFDS. Then we will talk about the performance test result, the number of the features in the test scales from 1 million to 1 billion. Then we will show how to increase our work and the package into the existing ML Lab framework to provide a, a very simple API for users. At last, we will talk some about uh, the feature work. Okay, let's start with the background. Uh, the background is that um, more training data and uh, more big, better, uh, more bigger model will mean better result in many of cases, such as uh, uh, advertisement CTR prediction. So we need the models with billions of, uh, billions of features. In this case, it's both the training data and the models are so big, and we can't fit them into a memory of a single machine. So we need the distributed machine. And uh, another trend is that the machine learning is very, very complex. However, just uh, like the picture show, only a tiny fraction of the whole machine learning system is actually doing machine learning. <laughs> so it means that uh, uh, in the workflow, you really need a lot of support from the surrounding infrastructure, such as the uh, data platform. We will uh, load data from all kinds of sources and uh, we'll do, we'll do feature pre uh, extraction, feature transform, and so on. And uh, Spark has been widely used as the data processing and in some cases in machine learning. So uh, more and more machine learning users want to uh, use, use Spark to do feature uh, preparation to do machine learning. They also expect it to um, train a very, very big model. It means billions of scale, billions of features uh, to on the Spark platform. So this is uh, why we start our work. Okay, uh, then how machine learning works on Spark platform? This is a very simple architecture about uh, the Spark ML Lab uh, framework. ML Lab is built on a Spark core and provides some optimization algorithms such as uh, weighted least square, uh, iterate, 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 iterate related list square, and uh, as well known LBFDS and SGD. And uh, among these optimization methods, LBFDS is one of the frequently used in practice. So uh, lots of the uh, machine learning algorithms, especially on Spark, we use LBF, LBFDS as the server. So if we, if we can make LBFDS scalable, it means that many algorithms will, better, will benefit from this improvement of the optimization layer, then they can scale to billions of features. This is the direction of our work. We will make uh, the optimization layer can scale to billions of, um, parameter, uh, billions of parameters. So uh, let's start, uh, let's, in the following, let's analyze the bottleneck of the current MLM framework to billions of features. It can help us to understand uh, why, we knew the, why we need the new VLBFDS and why it's a scalable way. Okay, this is, uh, uh, we take the MLLab logic regression as the example. This is the workflow of the MLLab, MLLab logic regression. In each iteration, we start with broadcast coefficients to executors. Uh, can compute the loss and gradient in parallel in all executors and reduce them to get the loss sum and gradient sum in driver. This is the architecture. Then at uh, uh, driver, we use LBFDS, which is the breeze LBFDS to solve the optimization problems. 
as long as to find the next direction uh, using estimating the uh, inverse Hansen matrix. These steps can handle only be in a single machine. So if we uh, scale to billions of parameters, this can, can't handle. So this is uh, the current status of ML lab. And there are mainly two bottlenecks. Uh, the first bottleneck is the driver will collect uh, in this step. The driver will collect the gradient sum is an array. So, and the size of the array is equal with the parameters, the number of parameters, by aggregating the partial gradient collected from all excitors. The performance issue is the, aggre the aggregation is uh, the aggregation time scales linearly as uh, with respect to the number of excitors. It means if you have more uh, excitors, it will take more times to uh, finish the aggregation. Since in each node we have some uh, some bound and some limited resource, such as the CPU and uh, uh, IO bandwidth or, or network bandwidth. So this is uh, a bottleneck of the current uh, uh, framework. And in Spark 2.1, we have released, uh, we use a new uh, multi-level aggregation tree to accelerate this process. This means that in this step, we uh, gradient sum are combined partially on a small set of exactors before they send to the driver. Um, this will dramatically in reduce the load of the driver. It is the tree aggregation um, structure. And, and we have done some tests to show that this function and this improvement can reduce the aggregation time by uh, an order of magnitude, especially on the data sets with a large number of uh, partitions. With this optimization, we can uh, train the largest regression model on uh, several, uh, on tens of millions of filters. Tens of millions of filters. So this is the first uh, bottleneck, and we, and the least like we have also resolved it. And uh, the second uh, bottleneck is, is more critical, and um, this is uh, what we do to resolve it. And this is another bottleneck. It's after we collect uh, gradient sum from the exactors, even in the tree aggregation structure, uh, we need to store and uh, compute it in driver to find the next nice direction by, inverse, by estimating the inverse Hansen matrix. If we have billions of uh, features, the variable used by RBFDS cannot be holding a single machine. And even it can, can fit in a single machine, even the, the computer is very, uh, is, is very strong, has a lot of memories. The, compu the computation of uh, estimating the inverse Hansen matrix is also in involves lots of CPU uh, workload, make it uh, uh, very hard to be finished in reasonable time. Uh, we, we will take example, uh, such as advertisement CTR prediction, uh, it's very common that it says to have more than one billion of features. Uh, we suppose it has one billion features. Uh, we said uh, uh, RBFDS, RBFDS history size with 10. It will produce 21 billion variables, which requires 84 gigabytes memories to store the history states. And if, if you found a machine um, has, has a memory more than 84, it's very hard. <laughs> So, since uh, we can't uh, uh, find uh, all the machines have uh, uh, more than 80, 80, 84. For sparse, especially for sparse cluster, usually built from commodity hardware and uh, it will share with other applications. So uh, this is the uh, uh, main bottleneck. Okay, um, consider this bottleneck, uh, we will propose a solution. This is, actually, this is a new idea. This is not a new idea. This is, uh, uh, we, we learned it from a paper at uh, NIPS 2014. A very innovative idea to conquer the uh, memory and CPU bottleneck of single node RBFGS is whether we can make it distributed. So the vector-free RBFGS is uh, uh, just in this direction to solve the problems. Um, in the following session, I will introduce how we implement the VRBFDS implementation on Spark. And it's uh, almost uh, completely followed the, the algorithms in this paper. Okay. Uh, in VRBFDS, we will make the procedure of estimating the inverse Hansen matrix distributed. So the coefficients at grand, 
did and gradient array should also be distributed into multi-mode in the across the cluster. So we design a new data structure called a distributed vector. It's uh, use RDD to store the values of the distributed vector. You can refer the example in the slides. We have, uh, suppose we have uh, 12 <laughs> elements. This is very small, but it's an example. Uh, we will store it into four executors, and in each executor, it has three elements, and we store it in the local ML lab uh, vectors. So this is the data structure of the distributed vector. Um, in their VLBFDS, we are estimating the inverse Hansen matrix, uh, so we need to uh, calculate the, on the history states, which are rep represented by the distributed vector. It means that uh, the distributed vector need to support some uh, basic uh, vector operations. Actually, we have implemented some uh, basic uh, uh, linear, uh, linear algebra operations on the distributed vector, such as uh, add, minus, uh, dot product, scaling, and combination. So actually, the underneath of the, these options are all uh, RDD operations. So based on the VR, uh, based on the distributed vector, we can implement uh, VR, VRBFDS. <laughs> Before we talk about the VR. BFDS, we can quickly review the procedure of a traditional LB, LBFDS. Since uh, we only changed uh, one part of the traditional uh, LBFDS, only changed uh, the two loop recursion in the traditional LBFDS. So uh, this, uh, this slide shows the algorithm. In LBFDS, we start with a coefficient, suppose SK, and output a new position, SK plus one with a minus objective function. It means we will go around, uh, we will go into the direction of to make the function uh, more, uh, more smaller. The most important work of LBFDS is uh, algorithm two in this slide. We call it two-loop recursion. And in the following VLBFDS, we will replace this kind of code in a new uh, implementation. So, uh, which uh, just the algorithms <laughs> we will not get give very detailed explain. If you have interest, we can talk uh, offline. Uh, uh, we, we should know the input of the two loop recursion is the pre pre precision difference and the gradient difference. Both they are uh, vectors, and the dimension of the vector is the dimension of features. So uh, de uh, denote the size of the history states with M. All of this uh, two by M vectors with the original gradient vector will be calculated a new direction to in the single machine. So if the, uh, if the number of features is very large, this can't, can't be done. Okay, uh, let's, dec let's discuss, uh, discuss the space and test cost, by, uh, test cost for the uh, traditional LBFDS. And since uh, we can say in the slides, the space and the time cost uh, all related to the number of the features, uh, which we use D to represent. It means that uh, if the number of features is very large, we need the driver to handle a long, uh, to, to, to have a long memory to store it and to compute it. So, and, and following we will talk about VLBFDS, it only changes the procedure of the two loop recursion. And this is, we use algorithm three to replace the algorithm two in the last slice and the new two loop recursion procedure. Um, we, we, we should highlight that uh, the input of the algorithm three. It means that uh, uh, we need to first compare the dot production between every position difference and the gradient difference. And in the original traditional RBFDS, we didn't compute it since we we, we, we compute it in the, in the two-loop recursion. Why we, why we should need uh, to uh, compute uh, the dot products before is because we can distribute the computation across the cluster, since we now store the gradient and the uh, position difference in a distributed vector. So all of the operations are on the uh, executors rather than on the drivers. So the algorithms is defin definitionally will be efficient. And uh, uh, we will not d discuss the in-depth about the procedure of the new two-loop recursion, since I think most of our users will be interested in how to use it rather than how to implement it. Uh, if you, you have interest, we can also talk offline. 
Um, what we should keep in mind is the new two loop recursion in VRBFs is mathematically equivalent to the original traditional RBFDS. So we can sure that it produces completely uh, very uh, exactly solution to the traditional RBFDS. Okay, um, and uh, this is the new space and time cost for the VRBFDS, and we have uh, distrib we have distributed the uh, workload of the driver to the executors. Uh, you can say now the space and the time is not uh, relevant to the uh, dimensions of the vectors. Usually the M, M is a state, uh, history size of the RBFDS is usually is very small. So this is a very little workflow on the driver and we can uh, distribute the workflow on the cluster. Okay, after we have the optimization framework, we can implement some classic uh, classified machine learning algorithms based on the optimizer. Uh, logic regression is the first choice. Uh, and uh, actually, there are uh, very uh, promising and very, uh, very, 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 very uh, many uh, requirements of using logic regression in the uh, billions of filters data set. So we illustrate how to use uh, RBFD, VRBFGS to implement uh, logic regression. Uh, this is uh, the input format of the data set. We keep the consistent format uh, of the input data set compared with the existing ML lab. It's usually a uh, frame of RDD after some bas basic feature preprocessing. Each row of the RDD is a simple instance and which represents the features and the label. In the existing MLLab framework, we only split the RDD in the horizontal direction. However, in the VRBFGS, we will, uh, uh, in the VRBFGS based logic regression, we will split the input RDD both in horizontal and in ver vertical direction. It's like this. And this is because the number of features in these scenarios is very large. It can't, uh, it, it, it's, it's very hard to fit it into a single memory. And since we, we do not to want to fit the features in the memory, we want to, say to fit the gradient and the coefficients, they are not very sparse. After splitting, we get the new RDDs uh, as shown in the picture. So let's start with the, uh, the procedure of the logic regression. At the start of each iteration, we have the current coefficients, which is the distributed vector. We can configure the partition number of the underneath RDD for a distributed vector to align the coefficients vector with the features RDD, like, um, like this. Uh, according to the logic regression loss function and the gradient function, we need to calculate the multiply, and the formula is here. Uh, for each instance, and then we get the loss value and the gradient value. So we, we, um, following, we need to know how to uh, compute the multiplier. We should stack all features values in horizontal direction to get a multiplier. After, the, after uh, apply the multiple to uh, each instance to get a gradient learned from that instance. Then stack them together to get, um, uh, then stack them together in the vertical direction uh, to get the total gradient. This is the procedure of the logic regression. So we, in the following, we will illustrate what did happen on VRBFD, VRBFDS step by step. First, we will broadcast the coefficients vector into the feature RDD position. The coefficients is a distributed vector. We only t uh, broadcast the specific part to the corresponding feature partitions. So the new implementation, we will keep the same shuffle data set compared with the existing logic regression in MLLab. But uh, it reduces the CPU uh, workload and uh, a cupid bandwidth for a single node. And after that, uh, we compute the multiplier in each partition, get the multiplier in each partition. Um, so, uh, we should know is that the multiplier is only in that partition. We need to uh, stack all the multipliers in the horizon direction. So this is uh, the next step. And uh, stack the together in horizontal direction to combine with the corresponding label partition and to compute the total multiplier for each instance, then we will get the multiplier for each instance. 
since we usually have billions of instances, so the total multiplier for all instances is, should be also stored as a distributed vector. And the size of the vector equals to the number of instances in the training data set. Um, after that, we will broadcast the multiplier dis distributed vector into corresponding feature partitions in the horizontal di direction to calculate the gradient from that uh, direction, uh, that partition. Then we get the uh, gradient in each partition, and then we stack the gradient learned from that each partition in the vertical direction to get the final gradient <laughs> for this iteration. So we finish the, uh, the whole step, uh, the whole procedure of uh, e uh, one iteration. Then the final gradient is also a distributed vector. Um, we will fit it into VR BFDS optimizer framework and produce the new coefficients. To, to be used in the next uh, iteration. So this is a completely procedure for the largest regression implementation on VRBFDS. Okay, uh, except to, to the VRBFDS, uh, we also implement uh, vector-free OWLQN based on the uh, VRBFDS uh, to handle L1 regularization. And since the sparse solution is also very, very common in the, uh, use, ca in the use, use case. And another important thing is for the VRBFDS, we store lots of distributed vectors, and the underneath of the distributed vectors is RDD. So uh, we store them across the clusters for the reliability and the performance consideration, we should uh, checkpoint them at uh, regular intervals. So we have provided a checkpoint uh, interval interface. I think most of the users will not be interested <laughs> about how the algorithm uh, works. They will more concerned about the performance, <laughs> about the implementation. So <laughs> let's share the performance. We have run our VRBFGS based uh, logic regression on this as in different scales. The number of features range from 1 million to 1 billion. And the number of non-zero features per instance is about 100, since all of them are almost very, very uh, sparse. This is uh, usually the actual use case in, the, uh, in, a, lot, in a lot of companies. Uh, we found that when the number of features is less than tens of millions, such as uh, 50 millions, the existing MLLab logic regression behavior better. However, when we increase the number of features to more than 50 millions, the existing MLLab logic regression fails with an out of exception. But uh, we can, our VRB, VRBFDS based logic regression can run successfully. The threshold may, maybe depends on your uh, test environment. So, uh, but it's actually it, uh, exist. Uh, and, and I think the performance results is still uh, in progress. We have some room to make improvement. But at least it can successfully train model of billions of parameters and it's one of the solutions to handle very large scale machine learning problems. And uh, we have also done some other performance tests and found that the MLLab uh, RBFDS needs a driver to be very large, uh, with, with very large memory and very strong CPU. And the driver is also, its driver is also is very, uh, it's usually the uh, bottleneck of the whole procedure. But uh, our VRBFDS, uh, we can from the we can say from the implementation, it has no uh, bottleneck. It's all the distributed uh, computi computing process. So we don't have any machine with special uh, configuration. Okay, so we talk how to about use this imp implementation and how it integrates with the existing ML lab. This is the API. We have uh, currently we implement the so VRBFDS and the corresponding logic regression in a separate package, and the users can download and use it like, the, like this API. Users don't need to change any of your Spark environment, and it's a pure user level API. Um, except for some extra params, it's almost the same as the existing MLLab API. So if you are familiar with MLLab, it's very easy to use this library. And um, we have a new story. Uh, we, we, we will plan to merge uh, the new 
VLBFDS and corresponding algorithms to the Apache Spark means mutual. At the time, we have different solvers for this sets in different scales. For, for example, if your number of features is very small, less than 4,000, you can use the uh, weighted least square or iterate reweighted least square. Of if, if it is more than 4,000 or less than several uh, tens of millions, um, you can use the LBFDS. It has more better performance. And uh, if your filter is more than 10 millions or several, several uh, uh, tens of millions, you can run VLBFDS. We can train model, use the same platform as the data set increasing. So this is the uh, exciting solution. And then we can add the VLBFDS uh, as one of the optimization methods in the ML lab, and it can help, uh, help us to solve lots of other machine learning algorithms except uh, the logic regression, such as linear regression and uh, multi-layer uh, perception classifier. So uh, uh, if we merge the implementation to Spark, it's, uh, the Spark API will look like that. Look like this. We will have a new, uh, actually it's new. Actually we have now support different kind of servers. We have a new uh, parent candidate values, VLBFGS. And you, if you specify uh, this with the servers, it will train your model with the scalable VLBFGS implementation. So, and some other um, feature work. Um, since the, uh, this work is very, very uh, young and we have started, uh, uh, we have started before several uh, months, so there are some uh, performance improve uh, room for, for us to do. And uh, we have some plans to implement other algorithms. And uh, uh, what's important is uh, we have a partner to uh, use, uh, would like to use these algorithms in an advertisement CTR prediction with billions of parameters. And we will share the experience and the lessons we learned. So you can get this information from the GitHub. OK, and this is the last slide. And uh, I will use it to uh, summarize the key takeaways uh, from the uh, VLBFDS is a fully distributed cal calculation, fully distributed model representation, and can run successfully without out of memory. And uh, the VLBFDS API is consistent with Breeze LBFDS, and uh, it outputs the exactly the same result. And we don't uh, need uh, any special require, uh, components such as the parameter so uh, It's a pure uh, user application level libraries and can be plowed very e easily and can benefit from the smart cluster uh, operation and the development experience. So this is very, I think it's a very exciting uh, solution. Um, okay, this is a reference and we a great thanks for, for Xiang Rui from DataBricks to give us some, a lot of guidance and uh, help. Okay, any question? Awesome talk. That was great. Um, okay, a couple of questions here. Does anybody have any questions? Let's see one over there. Uh, my question is, uh, uh, how, how do you handle the case of sparse data in, in the feature space? Um, if, if you don't have, like, those billion features are not completely dense. Uh, do you have special handling for that? Uh, the second question is, um, how will you scale with uh, like the number of classes? I know that this work is probably assuming like a binary classifier, but what if you have a multi-class classifier? Okay, uh, it's a good question. <laughs> uh, I think I, I will first answer your first question. Uh, you, uh, the first question is about uh, uh, the, feature, the feature space. I think this is not uh, uh, what the work focuses on. And the work is focused on, uh, we have already had some uh, features represented by vectors. And, uh, uh, and to how do you get your features is, is, is you can use all kinds of uh, different ways, such as you can combine different uh, uh, columns in the data frame, use your, uh, use your uh, professional knowledge, or you can use some uh, uh, technical such as deeper neural networks to generate the features automatically. 
So this is, uh, I think this is a two different uh, uh, scope. Okay, and the second question is, uh, yes, uh, the VLBFDS is the uh, implementation in the optimization layer, so it can benefit uh, a lot of algorithms. Uh, currently, we uh, implement uh, logic regression with is used for uh, binary classification. And uh, if you, we want to do softmax regression and uh, linear regression, we have uh, to implement new algorithms. But uh, they have uh, almost the same framework uh, uh, followed our followed the, uh, the implementation in our logic regression, so it's not a very a big challenge to implement new algorithms. Cool. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, actually, thank you for this uh, very interesting uh, talk. Uh, for uh, the case of one billion parameters, can you give us uh, an insight about? Uh, the hardware you use to implement such algorithm, like how many uh, processors, how many PCs, because I think still uh, it will need like uh, oh, really okay. beefy machines. <laughs> okay, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's actually, uh, I was thought someone will ask uh, this question. <laughs> so, uh, since the tax uh, performance is very, uh, is very critical and we just finished it, so we didn't uh, uh, give some very detailed information. I, I, can, uh, uh, I can give you a brief intro introduction. We have used uh, a lot of uh, machines, and the machine is about uh, uh, 64 gigabit memory, uh, uh, 64 CPU cores, and uh, 128 gigabit uh, memory. So we use, uh, uh, actually we use the spec, uh, uh, use the memory for each character is only four gigabyte. So if you, uh, if you have this uh, configuration, the uh, MLab, current MLab framework can't, didn't can run. So this is why we talk about the, as a performance slides, uh, we, we have uh, run on, we have run VRBFDS successfully on very limited resource, since it have no, uh, no bottleneck of a single node. And I will write about uh, a block about uh, the text uh, uh, procedure in, in, in a block. So uh, you can, uh, maybe you can uh, get it uh, um, after we have <laughs> wrote it, the detail. Hey, uh, great talk. Um, so I have a quick question. So the final model that you end up with is distributed? The weight vectors is still distributed at the end? Uh, this, uh, uh, this is, uh, we, we currently use uh, a, distributed model, a distributed model representation, but uh, actually uh, in most of the case, we use L1 regularization, so you will, pre process, you will uh, produce a very sparse solution. We can collect it to local. Yeah, that was gonna, exactly what I was going to note that, because ideally you want to end up with lots of zeros with yeah. billions of dimensions, and then you can end up with a small enough model to actually yeah. serve it from a single machine without needing to use uh, a distributed uh, a system for that. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. All right, cool. I think with that, we're, we're going to call it. And uh, yeah, thanks. Uh, let's give them another round of applause. That was awesome. <laughs>